Hello, everyone, and welcome to a podcast with the Garden State Film Festival. I am Lauren Konkar Sheehy, the executive director. To my right is Brian Sheehy, board member of the Garden State Film Festival. And joining us today is Chance Kelly, who is not only an actor, writer, and podcaster, but also he's an honorary member of the Garden State Film Festival board. Welcome. Thank you very much. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, We have you on today because we're huge fans and I have a couple of questions from other fans that can't call in, but they wanted me to ask you a few questions. So tell us all about your podcast called The Island. <clears throat> it's actually Island. Island. That's, that's fine. Either one. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's the 300 year history of the, of the Island of Manhattan starting from 1609, which is when Henry Hudson came and found the Island and f- discovered the river that bears his name it's from then until 1909. And I chose those dates because, well, obvious for the obvious reason of starting with Hudson. And I just felt that um, I was going to go until 18, uh, I think consolidation was 1868. I might be wrong on that. Sorry, but it was right around there. Uh, but I thought take it another little further. And to me, in my mind, William Randolph Hearst sort mm-hmm. of to, brings it into the modern age in some way. And it's 1909. Um, I have a fascination with the history of Manhattan and the history of New York. And the more I looked into it, the, the more fascinating it became to me. And um, it's just something I've been kind of conceiving, you know, putting conceptualizing for a long time. And it just finally was the time to, you know, start doing something with it. So I love listening to it because my sister and I just close our eyes the way you describe everything it's literally a story that we can visually see everything the way so let's talk about the writing and the researching and everything that goes into this because this is very detailed this isn't just like hey New York is here and here's this spot this is specific details where I'm like my sister especially is like how does he know that where does he get all the information (laughs) well Let's put it this way. If I was working more as an actor, it wouldn't be nearly as detailed. <laughs> but I, I, I made the mistake of making good friends with the top historians in the world on the subject. Nice. And they keep me very, very honest. And I mean, these guys are the top. If you pick up a book about this subject, you will see in the if it's not by them, you'll mm-hmm. see them in the footnotes and cited here and there. Charles Gehring, Yap Yakups. And all the other guests I have are all very highly regarded scholars and professors and historians. And that's where I get the info. I mean, I I read the books. I read the sources they recommend. And I read their books. And I interview them. And I never would have known a a, a fraction of this if I hadn't kind of, you know, wandered into that world. Um, Wow. But the stories, and again, the reason it's so fascinating to me and the reason I'm so passionate about is because it's not told enough at all, really. Right. right? I mean, when you went to school, Lauren, American history was what? I mean, what was... I have no idea. You have no idea. Okay, so... I I don't think I learned much, but... Let's go to the Rhodes Scholar to your right. Brian, what what sums up uh, American history in your memory? Well, I I remember it was... It was... It obviously was just pre-Revolutionary War, Right. Right. We start about there. Yes. And then you would go through, you know, the presidents and the, mm-hmm. you know, the constitution. All you would then pick up, you know, going into this, you know, the different territories that we acquired. And then you would do uh, the civil war. And then going forward, um, it was just a development treaties were made with other countries. So I'm, but, you know, to your point, um, Chance, you've always been into history and Mm -hmm. you've found it fascinating. I'm the same way, you know, I'm I'm a former uh, Marine, so I have, you know, talked, well, not talked, but read a lot and and saw a lot of movies about Civil War, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the different uh, world wars, even wars that had nothing to do with our country. Um, cause I always wonder like, why do we keep making yeah, this why? mistake and yeah. going back into war, you know? Um, but so my, my question is, 
So I'm just a fan, you know, I just research and, and I know you are, what was the, what was the jump off for you to say, all right, I'm going to dig down and I'm going to really go down this rabbit hole. And, and this one specific thing. Well, I, I, it goes all the way back to when I was at NYU, when you and I were playing rugby together right. and, and we were formative young men and I was walking up LaGuardia place one night and there was this outdoor display that was put together by, I don't know if they were connected with the college or some, something else, but it was the purpose of the display was this little section of the block here is to, is to be made up to look like the topography that was here before colonization. And it was like, it just, it looked like you're walking in the woods and you weren't in the woods, you were in the West village. So I'm like, wait. And it just struck me in a certain way. And I, though I didn't grow up in the city, I, I grew up coming into Manhattan from a very early age. And I always had this real fascination with the city and that one moment of seeing, wait, this was woods here. And then I just, I have a bit of an imagination. Yeah. My imagination started going to the point where I start, and then I just started looking up. I said, well, let me look at what is the history of Manhattan? I, I have no idea. And that was 30 something years ago. And I just started, you know, reading and digging deeper and deeper. And then you, you look, you, you oh, ever wow. see this book? No. That this looks is so incredible. heavy. It looks like a brick. This is so cool. Oh. This is all about the, the, the geological, uh, um, yes, you know elements of of Manhattan Island. What was here when they found it before you know European colonization? And it's incredible. I mean, thirty different varieties of orchids. Uh, yeah, you know, twenty five different varieties of edible berries growing on the island. You know, the oh. the, the fish literally jumping out of the out of the water. Um, the, the oysters were a foot a foot wide. Um, and that's just, you know, this is just scratching this. I mean, this is just some of the information. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys had said, you know, that what your, re, you know, your recollection of what American history yep. uh, in, was encapsulated, uh, what you, what I, what you essentially said was it, it reflected the British and then the American right. version of what happened. I think a, a large reason why a lot of this stuff is not told is because it's just not that convenient to tell it. Right. The Dutch component yeah. complicates it. Right. Right. And when the when the English stole it from the Dutch in 1664 and they stole it straight up, uh, they didn't have any interest. They had no they had nothing to gain, as far as I can see, in preserving the history, the historical documents, the Dutch. Mm -hmm. of the Dutch colonization the previous 55 or so years. It didn't matter to them. What mattered was the city worked unlike any other city, certainly any other city in the colony, but unlike any other city in the world. And that never changed. Mm -hmm. So from, from 16, uh, I mean, we, the, this colony technically started, was founded in 1625 as a city, as a municip municipality of, New Netherland, the colony of New Netherland, which came to be centered in ca the capital of New, New Amsterdam, which is, you know, it's not all of Manhattan. It's mm -hmm. the southern tip where you used to work, you know, right. downtown, right. you know, that's it. Five points. Well, yeah, not even five points was the woods back then. This was. Wow. Is that so cool? Yeah. Well, you know where Wall Street is. Sure. You know that. Yep, yep. It was all below that. Amazing. When Amazing. they founded it, you, you know where the. You know where Bowling Green is. Sure. Charging Bowl. It was below that. Amazing. Because the fort was pretty much where, you know, the Alexander Hamilton Customs House, a beautiful, big, rectangular building. Okay. It's now yeah. yes. the Museum of the American Indian. Yeah. Sure. Right. Just, it's just east of um, the park there. Okay. That was pretty much where the fort was. Right. And they had 30 bark houses, basically holes dug in the ground covered in bark and and this is where the europeans were living this is not where the indians were like wow. and by the way they called them indians so it's not yeah necessarily politically correct i incorrect if people feel it is i apologize right but it's, it's written it in the documents from 16 from the 1620s and 1630s they refer to them as indians mm -hmm. so um native americans indians mm -hmm. algonquins you know 
same thing. Um, interesting, but, interesting. Because I'm sorry. No, Lord. go ahead. Um, because see that you're you're giving me something I didn't know. I thought that the that Manhattan was much more at that point uh, developed further north. You know, when you're saying, I mean, you're talking the the very southern tip of Manhattan, and uh, see the, the reason that um, well, I'm kind of going out of order here, but what you said on your your reflection that time when you saw the you're like, whoa, this was woods, right? right. And I remember watching a um, and a documentary about when they built City Hall mm-hmm. and they put the marble in the front. And they said they put like just plain old brick on the back and they were like, ah, no one's going to see that. They so, thought they thought yeah. no one would ever live there. And I mean, what, yeah. I was gonna li- yeah. isn't it crazy? But that is how, and that's how Manhattan went. Yeah. <laughs> the history of the West Village, the first colonists in the West Village were freed blacks. Okay. So, and this happened during the Keeft administration, which will be season two of my story. Um, and Keeft was a very controversial director of the colony. He started what has come to be known as Keeft's war hmm. with the Native Americans, with the Indians, with the Algonquins. And he was, he was by the end, he was a horrific figure. I mean, you know, had started this horrific war that killed scores of colonists and scores of Indians. And it was just, it was just yeah. brutal. And he was, he was replaced by Peter Stuyvesant who would be the last director of the colony and probably by far the most impactful. But of all people, it was Willem Keeft who deeded the land mm-hmm. to these freed blacks in the, in what is today the West Village. And they were some of the first, uh, as far as I know, they were some of the first African-American citizens to own and occupy property and start farms in, in Manhattan. In the whole colony, no, I'm sorry, in all of North America. It's not documented anywhere else that that happened. And th- again, this is the 1630s. This is what's going on. Anne Hutchinson, you, you know that name? Mm-hmm. Uh, sound, yes, sounds but, familiar, yes. But you don't know who she is, right? And no. it's okay, because no one does. She was a Puritan cast out from the Plymouth colony. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. so she was English. She was a Puritan who came across, not on the Mayflower, but shortly thereafter, she was cast out of, of England right. for her. She really didn't have incredibly radical views, but for a Puritan, it was radical. Yeah. She yeah. questioned. She questioned things. That's all she did. She yep. wasn't saying there's no God. She wasn't a witch. She wasn't anything close. She was very pious. And her father was a minister. But she questioned certain things and certain methods of applying the religion and applying the practice. They kicked her out of England. They sent her to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. They kicked her out of there, sent her to Rhode Island, which was a penal colony for a long time. The origin of Rhode Island is it was sort of like Australia's orange. It was a penal colony for the Massachusetts Bay and Plymouth colonies. Then they kicked her out of there. And where did she come? She came to she came to New York, New Amsterdam. Sure. And and that also happened with a lady named Lady Deborah Moody. These are all going to be episodes right okay in the in this story and in the podcast interesting what did ann hutchinson mm-hmm. wind up did obviously they didn't they didn't throw her out of new york did they well it didn't end well don't tell them yeah <laughs> it's really the story this epic story yes. is just unbelievable every step of the way it is like after all that in her life being kicked out of england kicked out of massachusetts kicked out of rhode island landing in new york finding solace and finding where she really wanted to stay she comes she had a pretty large family they set up <clears throat> essentially where you know where the split rock country club is up in the northeast bronx it's no is that no, near no. van Cortland or no no the side. So van Cortland's on the other side you, yes. you're on the east side Sure. Up above, uh, above Co-op City, above City Island. Oh, right. okay, yeah, sure. Right where Pelham borders, you know, it's sort of where Westchester borders the yeah. Bronx. Yeah. Um, they lived there, and it was a real outpost. Nobody was up there. Yeah. That's why it became the Hutchinson River because it was Hutchinson's land. They, there was no one up there. They're like, well, crazy old Ann Hutchinson. No, they weren't calling it crazy, but you know, kooky old Ann Hutchinson and her family are up there. Well, they were they were only in New Am- New Netherland for 
a year and a half before they were slaughtered as a result of Keith's war by the Siwano Indians. Okay. So it, the story is just insane. Like it just keeps going and turning and topsy turvy and all different colors and twists and turns and um, that I, I just think is fascinating. So Chance, how long have you been um, on this, uh, this uh, kick? Yeah, no, no, the commission of yours, right? I mean, you're passionate about it. It's yeah. like, you know, and it's just, I mean, it's it's fascinating, really. You, people, how much, you know, people don't, these days don't know any, like they yeah. they know tw 20 years, 30 years of history about the, where they live. It's a lot. Yeah, you're, and it's not, it's not anyone's fault either. This is not, yeah. right, it's not right at everyone's fingertips. You kind of got to dig, you right. know, and, and and there's also a lot of false information out there. There's a lot of propaganda, as there, you know, is always going to be. Um, you know, like I said, I've been in it for decades, but mm -hmm. I kind of conceptualized, hey, oh, by the way, I didn't I didn't conceptualize it as that would be a great podcast. I conceived of it as this is an incredible epic television series. Because mm -hmm. I can wow. see it as you're speaking. Yes. I already imagine like the gnat sound, all the foley and everything. Mm -hmm. Because the stories, it's not just he's telling you a story from a book. Like, you really get into all the characters. I keep closing my eyes because it brings me back when I'm listening yeah. to you. It's amazing. And then I don't know any of the the words right now, but you know the the terms for different groups. Not weed, not weedable. I don't. I don't even know. What the Walloons? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. See, Walloons. Like, who even knew who a Walloon was? What a Walloon was, yeah. right? No. And we're like, what? the the truth is. The Walloons founded this city. It, right. If if they hadn't, first off, and it's it's all about oppression, right? The only people, the only reason New York came to be, you know, preceded by New Amsterdam, was because of the oppression in 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 Europe, and this this whole thing about you know uh, you know the Europeans came over and stole the land and this and that and they were oppressed. They were oppressed. They were the oppressed people. Mm -hmm. They they were the refugees. So people need to re. They really need to better understand what happened in this country, particularly in New York. New York was a refuge for everybody from all parts of the world. If you were oppressed, if you were cast out, this was where you came in the 17th century. Right. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's that's documented. And they did not, um, they did not, uh, you know, st they did not base it on race, creed, religion. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Religion was a serious thing back then because Catholicism, it was life and death. Th these yeah. people were, they were essentially chased out of Europe by the, 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 the Haps by Habsburg Spain, by the Spanish empire that, that ran the Habsburgs that ran Spain. Spain and they were very oppressive. It was a Catholic, it was a Catholic um, nation, and and it, they were very imposing about Catholic. And Dees, I know you're you're Catholic, and I'm from yeah. a Catholic family. Yeah, it was a different flavor of Catholicism. Sure. Trust, it was oppressive, and it was you will do this, yeah, or you will either be kicked out, you know, violently, wow. or we'll just kill you. You know, right. and right. It, the same went for the Jews. It yeah. was brutal. It was the Inquisition. It was the Spanish Inquisition that essentially yeah. sent people here. Well, it that that caused people to flee here. Right. Yeah. Religious freedom. Yeah. It was more like going to the moon than going to another country because you came over on a wooden ship mm -hmm. that might be 60 to 100 feet long with no electricity, obviously, and no other power other than wind. Mm -hmm. And you slept below deck and it was incredibly uncomfortable. There was no modern medicine. The trip took two months. And once you got here, you damn near froze to death in winter and you had to build your houses. I mean, it was, in, it was in, insane. The thought yeah. coming over here. So you really had to want it. Yeah. And the, clearly these people wanted it, you know, it's amazing. The hardships that, um, that these settlers and, and pioneers had to, deal with. I was watching something um, uh, yesterday about the uh, 
the railroads in, in Alaska. And the reason I'm throwing up this, bring this up is because of the, the temperatures you were talking about. This one railroad was built in minus 30 degree weather. Like, and they had, you know, just, they had basically dynamite and, you know, limited tools. So, I mean, New York, uh, New Amsterdam was built under similar conditions. I mean, albeit not that cold, but I mean, the elements were a serious issue. They thought, that the climate was a lot warmer than it was in the winter the, until they stayed here a couple winters. And those first winters were like 1625 and six, where there were actually people coming over to settle the colony. Mm -hmm. There were, there were ships that were coming and getting furs and going right back, mm -hmm. but there was no one here really studying. Well, this, these are our living conditions here because they were all essentially living on ships until then. But it was cold and a lot of people died. I mean, it was just, there was no yeah. down coats and there was no modern heating and they were yeah. living this, and these huts made a bark, you know? Yeah. It's hard to imagine. It's amazing. So, is going into your um, journey with this, uh, and do you find yourself gravitating toward one period of the, you know, it's basically a 300 year um, piece of New York that you're, diving into do you find yourself having a favorite period or you're just in love with it all i gotta say i am pretty much in love with it. well i mean it felt like i was in love with the hudson boy yeah, yeah. Right? and then we go right into adrian block and all of that then we go into hendrick christensen and to me the importance the important part is taking it detailed step for step mm -hmm. and you know we do piece some things together. It is a little bit of detective work, but yeah, yeah. you can do it based on educated analysis. You can sort of fill in some of the gaps in an educated manner. Um, I love that it's so chronological yeah. and that we were, we will start in 1609 when there was no, when there were no colonists here, put it that way. There were no Europeans. And in 1909, when this is a thriving city, yeah. and you're in the modern age by then. And there's buildings and there's, you know, political parties and corruption and everything else. Yeah, Tammany Hall. <clears throat> yeah. That I, I also love the fact that I'm lucky enough to have a family member who is part of this story. My great, great, great uncle took over. Um, are we getting feedback of some kind? We're not. You're not hearing it? I just no. tapped the table. All right. oh. My great, great, great uncle, John Kelly, Ooh. took over running Tammany Hall for Boss Tweed when they put him in, when they bought, put Boss Tweed in jail finally. Oh, no wow. Way. Wow. Yeah. And that's, wow. That's part of this story. Oh. Yeah. And this is actually my uncle, Hugh Kelly, wrote this book. So when we're done with that season seven, uh, season one, rather, I'm going to, I'm going to skip forward and interview him anyway. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. And give some previews to that. But that, all the eras interest me. Because yeah. this era also brings in somebody named Cornelius Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. who is one of my favorite figures in the whole, the whole epic story. And is somebody who's related to somebody today who's pretty well known by the name of Anderson Cooper. And oh, wow. I've, I've reached out to him. We've reached out to him and we're trying to get him on the show at some point. Good. As a guest, he's related to half the people in this story. I mean, wow. It's incredible. It's, it's I also crazy. love that when you say the original names of something and then the names of what we formerly, you know, what we know right. of them now. I love that. Right. Like, Ooh, right. tell us what it really was. Yeah. And some of the names are the same. Like yep. there was the Hoboken Indians were right over where Hoboken is. Like you could look across yeah. back then at the lower part of Manhattan, look across and see Hoboken Indians over there. There were Raritan Indians just below them. There mm -hmm. were Canarsie Indians on the lower point in Manhattan and across the East River. Um, well, with that, we have fans that want to know if you're going to do this on New Jersey next. <laughs> uh, well, listen, there's a lot of New Jersey in this story. We've already been to Jersey somewhere, yeah. but we do get into um, – there's a lot that happens in New Jersey. There's a huge event during Keith's War – that mm -hmm. happens on the Jersey side. Um, but you got to keep in mind, it was all one colony back there. And that included, it, essentially, New Netherland was roughly what the tri-state area is today. 
Hmm. It actually makes a lot of sense. We I've talked to people in this area about why don't we just make it one state? Because you're going over state lines and these rules change and those rules change. They had it as one colony. They had a good idea. So when we get into all the stuff down in New Sweden and those parts of the story in 1638, 9, 10, 4, 1638, 39, 1640 and forward, that's all southern Jersey. That's that that's where New Sweden was. It was going down towards towards Delaware. Cool. Um, so there's a lot of New Jersey in this. And maybe maybe I will do something with Jersey after the 1909 mall. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, do you ever think uh, chances could just uh, be like a venture for you or a, a, a passion Serious. that Serious. could just keep going? I mean, you, you're, you're looking at just from obviously, let's face it, New York is what it is, right? It, it's just it's, a lot of people consider it the epicenter of the world, business-wise, culture. Yeah. You know, others argue, argue that. But being here, you know, for the United States, we think New York is the center of the universe sometimes. But do you feel like this is something that you could see doing with other areas in the country, like going up and, you know, it just could mushroom and keep keep. Well, yeah, I mean, some people have said that to me, and I, I obviously I love doing it. I, I really enjoy doing it. And I would like to apply it to other areas of history and other, other, you know, contexts of history. And I think it's a good format. Lauren, your, that's, you know, the, your comment is the best compliment you can pay us is, which is uh -huh. I close my eyes and I can see it before yeah, me. I love it. That's the purpose. I mean, that's the objective. Mm -hmm. And, and we have, you know, and I put it up on one of our promos, we have high school age kids and middle school age yeah. kids listening, listening to this. That's yeah. Now, I wish that existed when I was in school because yeah. I couldn't stand history <laughs> when yeah. I was in school. You right. know? And they're talking at you, but this is like you're there. You're, you know, I'm like, whoa, I see them getting off the yeah. ship and everything happening. Well, we, that's intentional. I'm glad you see that. We yeah. What we try to do is apply as many of the five senses as we can mm -hmm. to this telling of the story. And there's simple ways to do that. You know, what did it smell like? What did it sound like? Also, what did it cadence feel like? Yeah. Of the way you describe it too. Like you have perfect timing for everything also. Well, that's very nice. Well, if, yeah, if, if, if you need anybody <laughs> If you need anybody to fill in and uh, make some bull noises, or train, I, I can, train I'm noises. A, I'm a good uh, I can do a good bull. Listen, we we always need good voices and noises. We have a lot of them and uh we've had some really good voices yeah. on it. It's just the character voices. We always say the main character's name mm -hmm. at the beginning of the episode and I've had to I've had to really seek out those you know people that really can really do the accents well. That's uh, so cool. Oh yeah. that's cool. So I I'm forgive me that then that's a big part of the process too is having different actors i guess you would call them or right pre-production uh, pre-production yeah. right and to get it you, all to get all the the voices for that's got to be a bit of a process yeah we don't do a lot of like act play acting but i i like we we say the character's name in character at the top of every show so it's been henry hudson mm -hmm. and then it's been uh, adrian block then hendrick christensen then it was sarah rapalier and then it was, um, wait, who was five? Um, oh, P Pierre Minouy, Peter Minouy. Mm -hmm. right. And each one is in, you know, because they're all different ethnicity. They're all different. Um, Backgrounds, yeah. Yeah, nationalities. Hudson was an Englishman. Adrian Block was Dutch. Uh, Hendrik Christensen was also Dutch. Sarah Pallier was a Walloon. She mm -hmm. was French. She was French-speaking uh, Protestant from what is today Belgium, and Pierre Minouy was the same, but he came from Vessel, Germany. Um, before, well, they left. They left the Spanish Netherlands first. That's so cool. So, tell us <laughs> how people cool, can man. find your podcast. And for Droid users like myself, I think we have to find Apple something. And yeah, we the link tree is the best right. link for our okay. podcast. So because we have the link tree up. That offers every mm -hmm. uh, podcast directory that we are, we're on. Podcast directory is like Spotify, Apple. Yeah. You know, oh, I, no, I like Google. Okay. Or I like Podchaser. Or yeah. I like whichever ones we're on with one click, you can go there. Oh, that's great. 
And the link tree can also take you to our website where we have some more, you know, more info and info on the guests. And we have some artwork um, to, you know, support oh, the yeah. episodes and stuff. The artwork is amazing. And even the, the overall art for the podcast. I love it. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, that's, that's really the Costello cool. map. And it is luckily in public domain. Oh, but then we put our own logo on it. Yeah. And it is really colorful. It's, I mean, it's, it's informative. If you look at it, you know, you can see where the rage, where the charging bull is right now. And you can see exactly where I'm talking about where the fort was. And then you can trace that that's Broadway. Yeah. That, that's not like that road didn't disappear. Right. <clears throat> that's not only our Broadway that was there for hundreds of years before that as a, as an Indian trail. We talk about that a little bit about, uh, that specifically in episode five, and we'll talk more about it. That that trail starts to tell the story of this thing. Oh, you guys can see it. Yeah, yeah there it is. I mean, yeah, that, I love it. So what you have here, that big artery coming down on on the west side of the island, that's Broadway. Wow. Now that that wasn't built by the Dutch, that was built by the Indians, wow. by the Native Americans thousands of years ago, and it goes all the way up up the island. But then it actually, you 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 would get in a canoe or, or mm. a sloop or whatever, take it across Spite and Dival and g continue right. on. Yeah. Uh, and it would take you as far as Albany in one direction and eventually Boston in the other direction. And there's that that becomes part of the story as we go forward. Interesting. That's so cool. I mean, really, that um, educational perspective yeah. is just outstanding. I'm yeah. so glad that high school students and middle school students are taking advantage of this because everything as we know it with school right now, it's very hard for the kids to connect and you are everything that you do. It, it's uh, interactive basically. Um, and I think that's so important, <clears throat> but I also want you to tell us about what's going on now. What projects are you working on now besides the podcast? Um, yeah, I will. And by the way, before oh, yeah. we leave the podcast, the, the one other thing you can do on the link tree is yeah. our contact us. And we really want people to contact us and tell us what they think and what they like. And just like you said, Lauren, you love the way you can see and hear it and smell yeah. it. The, the, the fella from the high school who, con that's how he contacted me. He oh, sent us an email and told me, us, it's awesome. So please, people should feel uh, encouraged to do that. And it helps us shape the show too, you know. That's awesome. Um, go ahead. I feel like I can even feel like the dirt in the air from being back then. Do you know what I mean? Like with no cars and there's just dirt flying all over from just the horses and Maybe everything. Maybe that was maybe that's some too of my much. Potato Sorry. Chip crumbs oh yeah, I was sleeping and I was like, <laughs> I can't. Well, breathe. Maybe it was a past life experience. Maybe you were. I'm going back. A colonist in a 17th right. century colonist. In New my outfit. You were. Uh, I mean, look at the... these cheekbones. Yeah, definitely. I yeah, think you were there. Indian. Yeah, yeah, she definitely has. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, episode six and seven are being written as one. It, double episode oh, right. um and they're going to be a little delayed because i did um book a uh a project an acting project that will i i'll leave in a couple of weeks and go shoot the um film is called uh american underdog the kurt warner story oh, wow. and it's about quarterback kurt warner who won the super bowl for the rams in 1999 I don't know if the Super Bowl was 99 or 2000. I always forget, but yeah. it was the 99 season, I believe. Against the but, Titans, right? Yes, but yeah. an incredible story. Yeah, the Titans. Completely true, obviously. And a great story, a, a great American story. And like I was saying earlier, it, this is on par with Rocky and Rudy yeah. and that kind of, and Hoosiers. It's, it's, and it's incredibly well-written, the script. Um, and I played Mike Martz, Coach Mike Martz, who was the uh, offensive coordinator when they won. And the offense that Kurt Warner ran on the Rams was no, came to be known as the greatest show on turf. It was right. a very fast, dynamic, you know, quick release, uh, very athletic uh, receivers, that type of offense. And, and Warner himself was just a phenomenal, unusual talent. And, uh, you know, a little bit of history right there, the movie itself. So 
I've been preparing for that and getting ready to go off and shoot that in a couple of weeks. So awesome. If, yeah. So episode six and seven will have to, del they'll be delayed a little bit. They'll, they'll come out uh, probably in late March or April, but they'll, they'll come closer together than mo than they usually do. So it's, okay. well, it's almost like we'll catch up and the season. The season will be complete by the end of April. Well, that's oh. great. Cause in the meantime, everyone can watch the movies at the garden state film festival, March 23rd to the 28th, and then pick up with your podcast when you're ready in April. Excellent. The <laughs> podcast will wait, do watch the yeah. garden state movies. <laughs> that's right. Do that first. We'll wait for you with the podcast. Yeah. We're so excited for this. Hey, it's Chance, just to backtrack about the movie. Um, where Where is it being shot, you said? Which location uh, you're going Oklahoma. to? Oklahoma. Yeah. And when, what's, well, actually, what's the name of the movie going to be? Or is it out yet? It's American Underdog. Oh, I'm sorry. The Kurt Warner story. Okay, I apologize. Yeah. I think um, they're just going by American yeah. Underdog. But it's yeah. cool. Yeah. And then any, uh, any expected release date or... Was that too? Uh, I don't. That I haven't heard, but it's generally close to a year mm -hmm. by the time they, you know, do everything they have to do in their post production and all that in their marketing. Um, but it's going to be good. The um, right Zach Levi. Ah, I might be saying his name wrong. Levy. Zach Levy. I don't know. Zach Levi is the is the lead. He plays Kurt Warner. He's great. He's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis Quaid plays. Uh, Dick Vermeil, yeah. who's our head coach. Interesting. And I never worked with him, so I, I'm, cool. I've always been a big fan of his. So that's okay. going to be fun. And um, yeah, it should be good. It should be a good story. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, we're always here for you. We're, we want to promote whatever you're doing. Thank you're you. part of the family. Yep. And we're excited that this podcast is not only amazing, but the educational components alone are just outstanding because these are the things we really want to know and nobody's talking about them. So thank you so much for doing the research, I can't imagine how many hours are spent on the know. research side. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a few hours. Yeah, and then <laughs> whittling down. And, I, and I, I, I read really slow, like really slow. So, not as slow as me. I'm no, don't, don't be so sure. I go really, really slow. I and can, I daydream as I read. I start, <laughs> yeah. my imagination starts going off. And then I'm like, yeah. I've only gone half a page. And I'm like, <laughs> an hour. You know? But that was, is what makes it so good. Because that daydreaming part, you add that in. I guess so, yeah. 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 My, my historian friend said, he goes, you know what? Your speculation is inspiring. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that as historians. So I'm glad you're doing that. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe that's, that's, a, maybe that's a new market history speculation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to do a little bit of it. Not too much, just a little bit. Oh yeah, my gosh. That's funny. Fascinating. Well, we have the link tree up, we have everything up and then we will continue to post it and send it out. Oh, we'll also send an e-blast to all of our Garden State Film Festival contacts that we have to be able to share this with them. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Chance, really, you. it seems yeah. like you got a really great thing going here. Thanks, buddy. Happy, happy you got a real passion about it and a mission. Yeah, thank you. Thank Is there you. anything else that we should share about it that we didn't cover, you think? No, no, just listen in order. Yeah. Seriously, like, uh, we will wait. You, you're not going to, you're not going to miss anything. Start with Hudson, go, then go to, go, go to Block, right. then go to Christensen, then go to Sarah Rapalier and then go to Pierre Minoui because you need to meet these characters along the way. It is just like a TV show. Yes. If, if you don't watch episode two, you're not going to know who Henry, who yeah. Henrik Yak Elkins is in episode right. nine, eight. I, I right? did try right. that and I had to go back. Yeah. So you know. just do it in order, do it the right way from the beginning and then you don't have mm -hmm. to re <laughs> revisit and be interactive. Tell us what you like. Contact sure. us, you know. So it's, it's unlike the honeymooners where you can watch the honeymooners <laughs> in any order. Yeah. Yeah. And also you, you, if, if you're not, if you don't want to seem old fashioned and email, you can join all our social media and you can contact message us via the social media, whether it's the LinkedIn, uh, the um, Instagram messaging or the Facebook messaging or whatever the heck it is. Twitter. We're on Twitter. You know. Awesome. All right. Cool. Okay. Thank you so really much. Cool. Yeah, we're thrilled. And right. then we'll have to have you back to talk about after the film and how the process was. Yeah, I'd love to. Love to. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to be a fun job. So. All right, cool. Thank you so much, Chance. Kelly. Thank you guys and give my best to Diane and, and yeah, to all. 
We will. Thank you. And then again, the Garden State Film Festival presents March 23rd to the 28th, 2021. We are live in person at four venues, but all of the other films are online. So you don't have to leave your home. You can stay in your pajamas and eat ice cream and watch the films March 24th to the 28th. Thank you so much. Tune in. Uh, visit gsff.org for more information or email me at lauren at gsff.org. All right. Peace out. We're doing the sideways. Peace. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Bye, thanks. Have a good day. Good you as always. All right. All right. See you.